Our guest author this morning, Stanley Marke, penned a conversation starter read, uh, read rather titled Debt Riddled Marriage, The In-Law's Unintended Marriage Trap. Hmm. Now, this offering is described as a financial educational tool that aims to equip couples with key financial and emotional guidance in decision making before they enter into a matrimonial obligation. Now, to help us discuss this rarely spoken of subject of money and nuptials, let's rope in Stanley into this conversation. And he joins us now via Skype. Mr. Marke, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Uh, very good morning to you and to the viewers as well. Very, very important subject. This is let's start. Uh, let's start this book. Let's start about what this book is all about and why it was important for you to write it. Uh, I am a relationship coach, and uh, I see a lot of people who come to consult uh, in relation to getting assistance with having their relationship matters solved. Now, one of the things that I have found is that uh, financial matters uh, were the number one reason why families or people in a relationship were having problems. So that was a reason enough for me to actually come up with a book that will be a solution or which will help couples to actually enter into a relationship or understand matters to do with finances in the relationship so that they don't have to find themselves in a place where they are facing debts, which actually becomes the center issue in their uh, relationships. Yeah, and just picking up on the issue of debt, you say that there is good and there is bad debt. Say that in English? Yes. <laughs> Come again? Tell you us what you that. mean. Yeah, tell us what you mean by good and bad debt. Okay. You know, uh, good debt are debts like, for example, your house. I mean, cannot avoid uh, entering into a bond uh, debt, you know, but they are bad debts, you know, bad debts are things that we, we cannot be on buying food on debt, as an example, uh, buying clothes on debt, you know, uh, you find that a lot of people have this type of debts and they end up piling and you end up not being able to, to pay off the debts, just like uh, going on holiday, you can't go on holiday on debt, you know, you go and enjoy your holiday, you come back home, and you find that uh, now you've got a debt that you must pay. No, debts must be debts that make reason, you know, things that you cannot afford and that you cannot do uh, or make life without. A house, you cannot afford it for cash, but we all need a, a house, we all need a car. So those are the examples of good debts and the example of uh, bad debts that we, most people, uh, they have this type of debt. I found the most intriguing issue in the book was Lobola. And you mentioned how this can be one of the debt drivers for newlyweds. Well, I suppose not so many traditionalists will be so happy with you hearing, with hearing you say that. I, th I think we must agree that uh, the purpose of Lobola in the African uh, context is to uh, marry the two families, to bring the two families together, to bring the two newlyweds together. So the amount is not uh, uh, the most important part, but it is the process which is important. But now, because it is not a, a regulated figure, then uh, you find that uh, it will vary from family to family, and uh, the reason behind uh, the reasons behind uh, the amount charged for the bola uh, would be unfounded in most instances. So uh, that's why I'm saying it, the. It's a debt. It's a debt driver, and because most people, when they enter uh, or when they get married, they don't have that kind of money to actually pay the bola. They end up uh, being pushed to 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 make debts, and that debt is carried into 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 their marriage. You know, and they start uh, not on zero, but they start with a very big figure that they have to both service, and it's not only serviced by the men. But because I'm staying with you and the money that I'm supposed to be assisting the family with now is directed and paid the debt. So if a man takes uh, a loan for to pay debt, then that debt will be paid by both the woman uh, indirectly with the man. So it, it's unfair in a way. 
You know, Mr. Market, there are those couples who are not so comfortable in talking about money. And in some instances, some spouses don't even know what their spouses are earning and how they spend their money. So how does one even begin the conversation? I, th I think uh, it is important to understand that when you enter into marriage, you are going in for a lifetime. So you need to understand uh, the patterns, the habits of the person that you are entering into this uh, lifetime commitment. What it means is that uh, these difficult questions, you can't avoid them. You can't because they say uh, life, love, you no know, love can drive you crazy. But when it comes to things that are going to be at the center of ensuring that you have a healthy uh, relationship or marriage, you need to just brave up and start asking this question. You cannot find a nice way to ask a question that relates to finances in terms of understanding uh, the the, the financial history of a person that you are entering into a relationship with, um, and also looking at um, their debts. If you are about to get married to someone, you need to know if they have debts. And you can also even go to an extent of getting a, a financial report on each other so that you can be able to enter sober into marriage. Because once you sign with your partner, financial then decisions. whatever debts they have, yes, whatever debts they have, Okay, we are okay. pressed for time, unfortunately, Mr. Market. But then, quickly take us through the impact of the couple's financial decisions uh, that it can have, or rather, it can have an impact on their marriage. It's it's very important that uh, the couple have to sit down and talk about everything that has to do with money, because uh, marriage, uh, though uh, we don't talk about money a lot when it comes to marriage. Money is important in marriage because everything that we do must be financed. And uh, we need to know each other's earnings. We need to know how much does your spouse earn and so that you can be able to sit down together, plan your finances and make commitments and stick to those commitments. Because if you don't sit down and agree, then you might find yourself that in the long run, you are surprised by uh, debts that you don't know how they came about. And it is very important that when couples come together to sit and discuss their finances, they should be in agreement. There should be trust, trust between the two of them because whatever, they, whatever decisions that are made that are not respected or honored, they will come back to home them. Hence, I wrote this book so that uh, couples can be able to be taken through this book in terms of how to ask these difficult questions and also how to understand in terms of how to manage your finances, how to ensure that. Uh, the left hand knows what the right hand is doing because ah. remember that uh, this money in the marriage finance okay. is dirty. All right, Dr. Maki, we have to leave it there, unfortunately. Great conversation this is. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. For you. And that is Pasta, a relationship and marriage coach, Stanley Maki there. We've just been speaking about his book titled Debt Riddled Marriage, The In-Laws Unintended Marriage Trap. It is seven.